Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the Viveza 2 plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop from the Nick Collection by Google that is now completely free. Here we go. Theme tune. Boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -boo. Do the scorpion. So that was my scorpion dance. If you're wondering why I did that, if you follow me on Snapchat, you'll have seen that yesterday I got stung by a scorpion on my back. That's the second time in my life. It really hurts. If you don't follow me on Snapchat, my snap code is gonna be up on the screen in three, two, one. Great. So, Viveza uh, 2, which is part of the Nick collection, essentially is to do all of your color tones and your highlights, your shadows, got some tone curve stuff in there, some structure stuff. Anyway, it's, it's really powerful and it has some really great ways that it's, it uses, uh, it selects different areas of your image. So let's jump in and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So these plugins work in both Photoshop and Lightroom and I'm gonna show you how they work slightly differently in each. So first of all, this is in Lightroom. If you want to do it from Lightroom, you essentially right click on the image that you want to use. We're using this image of Rosie White from Dance Lovely today. And you go edit in Viveza 2. That's going to bring up this dialog box with some selections and choices. So you can edit a copy, edit the original. So the original will mean that you won't have a second version in Lightroom. Edit a copy will make a brand new copy of the, the, the base file. Whereas a uh, copy with Lightroom adjustments means that if you've made any edits, then it will keep those edits. Okay, so I would recommend with your Lightroom adjustments. Um, TIFF, so you can have TIFF, PSD or JPEG. I think TIFF, TIFF is probably going to be the best. It has the most information, I think, and it works across multiple platforms, whereas PSD is only Photoshop. Color space, I would keep it in sRGB, which is perfect to use on the internet and on screens. If you're gonna use it for print, then potentially pro photo, but you can always convert it later. And definitely keep it as 16 bit, because then you've got more information to edit. And then you're gonna hit edit, and what it's gonna do is bring up Viveza 2, which you can then use to make the edits with. Now, look down at the bottom here, there is no brush. Okay, and that's the difference between Photoshop and Lightroom. Lightroom, you can then create different layers and do different things. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it in Photoshop, and this is really important. Now you can right click, edit in Photoshop. However, what I would recommend doing is open a smart object in Photoshop. That means that you can go back into the plugin and make changes. And let me show you how that works. So if you would select that, you would open up inside Photoshop like so, and it's a smart object at the bottom down here, which is great. So now we've got this layer selected, we can hit Viveza 2. What you'll see is it's going to pop, bring this up saying that there is no brush tool, just like Lightroom, because you'll be able to do that with layer masks and things. However, the great advantage for this is this. So the brush tool is, is grayed out, but watch what happens. If I'm I'll, I'll explain what this whole thing is in a second. I just want to show you why you do it like this. So if we change the hue so it's like this green color, okay? Hit okay, watch what happens. It's now gonna turn this image that green color, okay? And this is just for demonstration purposes, great. But what if you wanna change it? Now in Lightroom, you're stuck with this. You'd have to go back in and re-edit from an original file. Here, though Viveza you see is actually a smart filter. And what that means is, so it renders it each time you turn it on and off, but what it means is if you don't like that, you can double click on it, it's gonna reopen Viveza, and you can see that it's got my settings saved, so I can hit reset, and it's gonna bring it back, which is amazing. So what we're gonna do now or at this point is I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to work with Viveza. Now, let's start at the top here. We have three different views. The first view is the exact image that it is and it gives you a full size preview of what you're doing. The next one puts a line down the middle and lets you see each side of the image. So if we, let's change the hue again. You're going to see on one side of the original, the other side is any edits. And you can press the button at the top to make it a top and bottom, which is amazing. Then the other one is a side by side comparison or above and below and hit the other one and it puts it side by side. Really great ways. Now, if you double click on an image, 
what it actually does is zooms in. So now you can actually have a look at those changes, which is very powerful. So we're going to go with a half and half. In fact, we'll go full preview just for now. Top corner here, you have the hand tool, which allows you to move the image around if you're zoomed in. You've got the plus and minus, which allows you to zoom in and out. And then you have this button here, which allows you to change the background color. I suggest uh, working with medium gray. It's, for me, it's the easy, most pleasant one. And then you can move your draw in and out. I don't see the purpose of that, but it, it exists. So let's have a look at this side panel and let's see actually how this software works or the plugin works. So essentially, if you, you may only see this at first, okay, which is your four main sliders and a levels and curves, and that's pretty much it. But next to that, you have a little button to the right hand side of this, which brings up extra things that you can change. So let's have a look through and let's work through each element. Your brightness is just like your brightness in Lightroom and Photoshop. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Your contrast is the same. Okay, it boosts your contrast to the right, reduces contrast to the left. Saturation pretty much works the exact same way. Structure is slightly different. This is it works slightly different. It's a little bit like the clarity tool in Lightroom. So it actually looks at the textures and it boosts the textures by using kind of a contrast, but in a slightly different way, uses the midtones to do it um, as opposed to the far ends. Anyway, I have a, a tutorial for Clarity Tool in Lightroom. Go check that out because that kind of explains this pretty well. Okay, the next things down here are you have shadow adjustments, which are things that are only in the left-hand side of your histogram. So things in the darker areas, it's only going to affect those not the highlights. And then you can then change your different channels, your RG, I'm sorry, your warmth. Now it's called warmth, it should be called color temperature, I think, because warmth means you make it warmer to go to the right, but actually if you go to the left, it makes it cooler. So surely that would be temperature. But anyway, that's just a little niggle that I have with this. Um, but it makes it simple to understand, I guess, with it warmth. Uh, so it adds yellows, magentas, and oranges to the right, and blues, greens, and cyans to the left. I think those are the right colors anyway. Underneath that, you've got RGB, red, green, and blue, that you can alter the individual color channels. So for example, if we were to use the green, we can boost the greens or reduce the greens, like so. Really simple to do. And then hue actually changes the hue of the image. Now, this is really important. This does globally what's happening. The global element up here, it tells you, okay, this is what's happening to the entire image. Now what you can also do on top of that, which is the most powerful thing and the reason to use this plugin is the control points, okay? And this is what's important. So what you can do here is add control point. So you click on your control point like so, and then you select somewhere for it to go. So we're gonna do skin tones at first. I'm gonna click right here on the skin tones. Now, there was some question from my video yesterday on how this works. Now I'm gonna show you and be really specific so we can understand this. The control point, which is this dot here, okay, right in the middle. This is the reference point, okay? And then, what it's doing is looking for similar things in a tonal range to wherever this dot is. So for example, if I click on the button down here, I click on this and it, I can see that I've got the tonal selection, which is on the skin tones. So it's selecting the skin tones, okay? Like so. Now, the circle that goes around it that I can change the size of this is how far away from this point is it going to find similar tones. So for example, if I was to select the entire image, watch, it's going to look at the whole image and look for those tones on the entire thing. Mainly the skin tones are in Rosie's, in the girl's, in the model's body. But as I bring it down, you see it's going to select it really well. It's only going to select it and it kind of fades out. That's the way that this works. So it is really powerful. Watch what happens if I move the point onto what we know to be green. Can you see now it's selected all of the greens and it's almost missed the model out completely because the tone range is different, okay? So how would you actually select the model? Now you could 
go all the way out like this, but then it's put this huge fade out. So instead you can do multiple things. You can have one here, so it's just selected her belly, right? Which is kind of great. But if we click out of this, okay, then let's make a change on, I don't know, brightness. Let's boost the brightness. What's gonna happen is it's only really affected her stomach, not her leg, because we can see in here, this is what it's mainly affecting, okay? So you could boost this and it's going to now affect her legs and everything, but also the rest of the image. So there's different ways of doing this now. What you could do, and I just wanna point out here, the percentage here is not the, the power of the filter, that's not what this is. This is how much of the image is being selected. So it's currently 9% of the image has been selected. If I go up here, it's gonna be more like 33% of the image is gonna be selected. Okay, really simple. So I've selected this, but now what I want to do is select the whole of the model's body. So what I can do is hold down Option, and then I or Alt on a um, PC, and then I can move it, and it's basically going, going to duplicate this. So then I can put one down here on the legs, okay, and let's duplicate one over here as well. Great. So now what we're actually doing is we're selecting the different areas but we're helping ourselves. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger so I can actually just select the model. Then I'll duplicate this again and come up here to the arms, okay? I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. You may have different images work very differently, okay? So now I'm, ooh, that's a little too much. I'm kind of happy with the way that that selected the model. It's kind of selected everything that I want it to. So what I would want to do at this point, so let's come out of this, so that we're not looking at all these masks, okay? Now I've got all of these control points, but I don't want to go through and edit each one individually, then click a new control point. Instead, I can hold down uh, shift, and I can click on all of my control points that I created, and then in the top corner, hit group. And now this is all one group, massively powerful. Because now I can go, okay, now I want to boost the warmth of my model, like so, you can see just the model has kind of been boosted. Okay, let's not do that though. Um, but what I do want to do, for example, is boost the saturation, I'm gonna bring the brightness back actually like so, and what I want to do is boost the structure because that's gonna make her kind of pop out of the image that little bit more, and I'm gonna lift the shadows. Great, but now what I wanna do is on the outside of her, on the green, is do something else to really add some drama. So, we'll add a control point, and we'll click on here, and now let's have a look at this, this one that, oh, that's the group, this one. Okay, so let's have a look at what this is selecting, all of my greens. So let's duplicate this by holding down um, Alt, and I'm just gonna select the green over here, and I'm gonna select another one over on this side, so I'm kind of just moving around the model. Well, let's go one next to the model in here. You can see we've not selected the skin tones at all, which is really quite amazing. And let's, ooh, let's just drop in another one here. That, so you see we've kind of left the model alone. Now again, let's shift click all of these that we've just added. And we can see which ones we've added by looking at what's selected down here. And let's hit group, okay? And then we'll, We'll unclick this group, and now with this lot, let's bring that brightness down. Wow, look at that difference that we've just made to this image. And uh, I'm gonna bring the saturation down of the trees, actually. Boost, I'm gonna reduce the contrast, so we can bring a little bit back in the trees up here. And let's boost the warmth, whatever. We're just testing things here. So now that looks great, but I can see I've lost everything in my shadows. So what I can do, take another control point, Add it in here. I'm gonna go around this area and I'm going to actually bring up my brightness. But now it's only in this area of the trees. So what I haven't had to do is go and select all of these areas again here, bolt at the brightness, and I'm actually gonna bring up the saturation inside those trees. Hold down option and move this over to this area. Same thing, wow. Now it's starting to look amazing. And you can see what I've done here. So let's select these two control points that I just added by using this selection, by holding shift and selecting the two of them, and add another group. Oh, sorry, group. 
click on the right one. So now let, we can actually go through and turn these groups on and off and we can go, so we make it a change on the girl, the model, and then we made a change on the background and then we brought some of those elements back. And you can see now, let's look at the before and the after, we've made this great edit on this image. And then the final thing that I want to go over, which is at the bottom down here, which is really important, is the tone curves. This is a tone curve, like so. So you can add a little S curve to this or do whatever you want to do. And you can also edit your black point, which would be the bottom here, and your white point, which is the top up here. And then your midpoint, okay? So you can move those around, so I'm happy like this. Now if you want to remove one of these control points, you just pick it up and then you drag it off the side like so, okay? Or you, or, and that's really all you have to do is just drag it off the side like so. Or you can double click on it and that will delete it too. And you can just click on the line to add as many as you want. So let's have a look at a side by side, as a split screen, sorry, at the before and the after. I think that looks pretty good. Side by side, huge difference there. And now watch what I can do. So we've gone over all of the control points. I can actually select one of these control points, like in the model here. Okay, uh, let's actually just zoom back out. And now I can ungroup them. So now what I can actually do is I can see all of these different model points now individually. So now it's ungrouped and I can go in and say, well, actually this section, I don't want to make that edit. Oh, I want to make it really warm just there. Okay, and that's really, it for Viveza. Now, when, once you hit OK, it's now going to make those changes. Remember, it was green at the blue at the beginning. It's now going to go in and make these changes to your image like so. Now, what, if you were to, I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate that. And I'm actually going to turn off my smart filters of the bottom layer. And now I can actually, because you can see the power of this, I can now paint this on. So I, if I have this layer mask selected, Command I to invert, which is going to turn it all black. I'm now going to take my brush tool, it's set to white, and let's have the hardness really low. Oh, let's, I've zoomed in, it's the wrong one. Um, so here we go. Sorry about that there, guys. And now essentially what I can do is I can just paint it on the right outsides here. And I'm just painting on the effect that I just made. So I'm actually using the Viveza and using it as a layer now, which is really, really powerful. Um, and then I can obviously paint it onto the entire thing and make the full changes. But if, for example, the arm has gone too far, that I think it's too orange, hit X, it's going to go to black, take my opacity all the way down, and now I can just paint it off the arm so that that effect isn't really happening on the arm as much as it was. And that really is the power of Photoshop. So that's my demonstration on how to use the Viveza plugin in Photoshop and Lightroom. I really hope this helped you. And remember, over the next five days, six days, or however long it is, I'm gonna have a tutorial on each one. Now, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up drop me a comment and definitely subscribe because I have loads of videos coming in the future. Anyway, this was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com.